Let's read. This is my Bible, the Word of God. Today, the Word of God will transform me. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the Word of God, according to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, starting at verse number 1, reads this way. Now, when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. As you reach across the aisles and grab your neighbor by the hand as we go to God in prayer, I would that you would consider for the next couple of moments as we come together around this sacred text, the theme for our gathering today, satisfied. 
satisfied. Eternal God, our Father, it's in the precious, holy, and matchless name of He who is our Christ that we come to say thank you. Amen. Thank you, God, for loving us so, for providing for us in ways that we could not do for ourselves. Thank you for opening doors that we could not open and shutting doors that we could not shut. Thank you, God, for being God. Yes, Lord. Thank you that you're God. Thank you that you're God. Thank you that you're God. Yes. God, I ask right now that you do what only you can do in this place. Save someone. Heal, deliver, set a captive free in this environment. Make preaching easy and allow the richness of your word to find fertile ground in our hearts that it might yield the fruit that gives you the greatest glory in the time that you have given to us. Neighbor, I squeeze your hand just as a sign to let you know that this is how close God is to you right now. That whatever it is that you stand in the need of, he is standing at the ready to give you. And if you can put your mind on it and you have the faith to believe it, then you shall have it. Whatever void may be present in your life, I need you to know, neighbor, that I know God to be a void filler. Hallelujah, God. He's looking to make a deposit in you that will satisfy you. Now, God, do what it is that you desire to do in this place. Receive your own glory. Yes. For it's in the name of Jesus. And all those who love him say, Amen. Amen. You may take your seat in the presence of our God. Hallelujah. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they will be filled. Stephanie, I believe that it was the Rolling Stones who said, I can get no satisfaction. And as it was for their generation and for probably ours too, they were speaking to our story. Oh, how we search and oh, how we seek and oh, how we pursue the matters of this world in an effort to be filled. Only, Tracy, to wake up in many mornings in our new reality just as empty as the day before. Could it be that our current concept is misplaced? That our current concept of consistency is misplaced? That in an effect to be filled, we really are missing the fact that God's filling really comes in the searching. Amen. 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 Could it be that our current concept of consistency, Mac, is misplaced in it that we have concerned ourselves with the thought that we are to stay full hmm. when our more consistent reality is that we spend more time empty? Hmm. <laughs> Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be, they shall be, they gonna be filled. How satisfied are you? Now, I have to be honest. I believe that this is a trick question. I believe that it's a trick question because it's one in which we ask and we contemplate often. It's a trick question because to be satisfied is really relative. Amen. It's, it's, it's relative, not just in the sense of personal prerogative uh, that, that is specific to your own case, but it's also relative because in order to answer the question, must, one must realize what season in life they are in. Yeah. Yeah. See, what might have worked for you last year may not be working for you today. Amen. What, what, what may have worked for you last week may be flatlining right now. What could be working for you may not find any sense of validity in the life of the person who you're sitting next to. 
It, it is here that, that I, I want to kind of play around. It's here where my thoughts have been arrested. Because Jesus, once again here in the text, has taken a major concern of the human condition and he has inverted it. He has taken that which we all must contend with and said that he will handle it, but he's going to handle it in a way that many of us have never considered. Amen. What do you do with your appetite? What is it that you are craving and where do you go to get it satisfied? feel like I'm going to start meddling in a minute. It is, it is here in the fifth chapter of the book of Matthew that we find the inaugural message of Christ. And, and it is here in this fifth chapter that we have classified it under the title of the Beatitudes. And, and in this series, this dialogue that we've been having over the course of the last couple of weeks, we have come here after Resurrection Sunday because sometimes in order to really appreciate, Julie, the victory that is ours for being Christians, you need to know how you were set up to win. Hmm. See, you did not start winning at the cross. That was the climax. Jesus set us up to start winning at the very first moment he started talking. So if you wait until you're on the cross to find victory, then you might faint before you get it. Amen. What, what, what you're in, you may find yourself dying to without realizing that you were dying for something. It is here that we get the Beatitudes. Be this your attitude.